a college commencement speech going off the rails with radicalism. Liberal City University of New York is taking a lot of heat after allowing a graduate to give a speech that attacks the police and the military and calling for a revolution against what she claims is the legal system's white supremacy. Those who brunt the ferocity of the violence, those who carry the revolution, the people, the masses, those who brunt the ferocity of the violence, those who need our protection, they will carry this revolution. No longer are we going to capitulate to oppressors. No longer are we going to put our hope in their depraved consciousness. The law is a manifestation of white supremacy that continues to oppress and suppress people in this nation and around the world. You know, Jesse, I don't know what law she's talking about, but I went to law school and so did Harold. Uh, I doubt we would agree with what that graduate said, but she was selected by the students of the City University of New York, an accredited law school. And, I mean, is that woman and the speech that she made reflective of what the graduating lawyers are thinking? Probably. We're euthanizing ourselves as a country. She is from Yemen. This is a poverty-stricken, war-torn country. Uh, rocked by terrorism, drought, famine. The United States has poured $4 billion in aid into that country, military aid, food assistance. So she comes over here. We save her life, probably. Grew up in Queens. We educated her. We kept her safe. And she comes out of here and delivers a really venomous attack on everything that has made this country great, capitalism the free market system, the pillars of this country, the foundations of this country she wants to destroy. We're educating this woman with our tax dollars, and she repays us by saying, thank you, now we're going to destroy you. This woman is a problem. A half-cocked cable news host would say that lawyers are the new terrorists. I wouldn't go so far as to say that, but what I'm saying is people are saying that. Da Dana, what about the fact that she is a future <laughs> lawyer? We combine that with some of the law students who were objecting to the federal judge yeah. who came in and spoke there. I mean... That's, but that's actually why I had written that down, because th so uh, that was at Stanford. Right. And remember, there was a professor there, and I think that she was put on leave. Yeah. She, was, I, she wasn't fired. The story went away. Yep. I'm pretty sure she'll probably be back there teaching in September. Then there was the other one. Remember all the students that were obnoxious? I believe that was at Harvard Law School. Mm -hmm. And there were judges actually saying, we shouldn't hire any of these right. people. We shouldn't allow them to clerk. I, when I first saw this story this morning, I thought, okay, they had, that the school had hired a speaker to come on and that they should be furious because isn't a graduation sp speech supposed to be about You've achieved such an amazing thing. You have a bright future in front of you. I'm excited for you. Congratulations. But instead, I found out it was. It's the students that voted for her. Yeah. So what happened to, to the graduation speech that's all about inspiration? Yeah. I would. That's one reason to get the money back. But there is another serious part of this. So Ilhan Omar is a congresswoman from uh, Michigan, sorry, Minnesota, and there was an attempt by members of Congress to censure her on the House floor, it didn't actually come to that. But even Democrats were saying, wow, you have gone way too far on these anti-Semitic tropes. I remember we don't want to do well. So, yes, you do remember it well. Sorry, <laughs> yes, of course. Um, what this young woman was saying, and again, she might believe it, but because this university is funded by taxpayer dollars, you have many people, including a lot of the Jewish groups, saying they should be stripped of their funding because they allowed this to happen. But the interesting thing, Greg, is that they the, the school took the speech down on YouTube, okay, but then they put it back up. So it seems that the school, you know, even though it's getting money from the government, was pretty much, you know, intimidated. Well, this isn't, I mean, this is kind of like the A block. This is nothing new, right? Every, I mean, she is not anything radical, even though she claims to be a radical and a revolutionary. She's a cliche. She's a stereotype that has been coming out of our colleges for decades. That's the worst part <laughs> about it, is that they're, they, they're brainwashed and deluded into thinking that this is bravery, when in fact, they're just going through the machine, and they're coming out exactly like a cookie-cutter you know, thing. They're exactly like this. There's nothing 
earth-shattering or groundbreaking about the things she says. The stuff she has regurgitated has been said by various radicals yep. to, to, since the beginning of radicals. And she never knows what, what, what will be brought after this so-called revolution. She's a Marxist. She's a nihilist. But the most important thing is she's brainwashed. Therefore, nothing anybody will say to her mm -hmm. will ever change her mind. It's a shame that we're, the critics who were very vocal uh, weren't criticizing her while she was there. I'm sure there were some people there that were pretty pissed off. They didn't say anything. She'll probably get a job at a law firm. She's going to sue us. She'll, about... she'll tick a box. Yep. Of course she will. But you know what? What's scary? She may sound like a Marxist, but she probably sounds a lot like corporate heads in marketing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> but, you know, what's interesting, you talk about people that might criticize. Uh, there was a tweet from Mayor Adams who was booed as he was introduced at this graduation. And he put out a tweet where he says, after her speech, apparently he was incensed. We cannot allow words of negativity and divisiveness to be the only ones our students hear. Good Your reaction her. to that, Harold? I, I agree. Look, this does doesn't sound like the graduation speech I heard at my law school graduation. <laughs> it's a very, very different speech. We just celebrated the lives of those who, who gave their lives for the freedom that we all enjoy. Freedom is messy. It's beautiful. It's hard to hold on to, but one of the more enduring and best parts of it is it allows us to take risks and be imaginative. She got that part right. She leaned a lot into her worldview, which I don't agree with. But I think what all of us are saying, or at least what I extrapolate from some that's being said, you got to give answers. You got to give just just painting this awful, terrible picture yep. um, is something that's been done. And sometimes we need to be reminded of some of the ugliness. And I don't agree with the things she talked about, but she has that worldview. If you have that view, and I would say to students, uh, and those in academia and even those in, in the private sector offer answers. That's what people want. And I don't think, I, I agree with the mayor wholeheartedly. Kids need to have, hear something inspirational, Dana. Uh, we all do. And as you talk about something inspirational, talk about how we solve these problems and not just put uglier and uglier pictures on the challenges that we have. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.